I moved into a house that wasn't empty. Something sinister was waiting for me, and now I can't escape no matter what I do. I've always loved the idea of starting fresh, new town, new people, new house. So when I found an affordable, charming old house on the outskirts of town, I jumped at the chance to move in. It seemed perfect, two stories, a big yard, and a cozy attic that I planned to turn into my office. The rent was ridiculously cheap, but I didn't mind. The landlord said the house had been vacant for a while, and after some quick paperwork, I signed the lease. That's when things started to get weird. The first night, I felt a strange chill in the air as soon as I stepped inside. The house was old, sure, but something felt off, like the house had been waiting for me. The creaky floors and drafty rooms added to the eerie atmosphere, but I brushed it off. After all, it was just an old house. I was in bed that night, trying to sleep, when I heard a soft scratching sound coming from the attic. At first, I thought it was just the house settling. But then the scratching turned into a slow, deliberate tap. Tap, tap, tap. I couldn't ignore it anymore. My curiosity got the best of me, and I grabbed a flashlight to check it out. The stairs to the attic were narrow and steep, and the air was thick with dust. As I reached the top, I felt a cold gust of wind that didn't seem to belong in the house. The flashlight flickered in my hand, and as I reached for the attic door, it creaked open on its own. Inside, there was nothing but old furniture covered in sheets and boxes filled with forgotten trinkets. But in the far corner, there was something that caught my eye. A large, antique mirror stood against the wall, its surface covered in a layer of dust. As I approached it, I felt a sudden sense of dread settle over me. The room felt colder, and the scratching noise started again, louder this time. Tap, tap, tap. Part 2 I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. The reflection in the mirror wasn't mine. At first, I thought it was a trick of the light. But as I looked closer, I realized the figure in the mirror was standing in the exact same position as I was, except for one thing, the reflection was smiling. I jerked back, my body trembling in fear. The mirror, it wasn't reflecting the room behind me. It was reflecting something else. Something that wasn't supposed to be there. I turned around quickly, but the attic was empty, just the dusty furniture and boxes. My breathing was shallow, and panic started to set in. I bolted downstairs and locked the attic door behind me, telling myself it was just my imagination. But the unease didn't leave. Every night after that, I'd hear the tapping coming from the attic again. Sometimes it would stop, but other nights, it would grow louder and more frantic, like something was trying to get out. I tried to ignore it, but it was impossible. The sounds haunted me, growing worse with each passing night. One evening, after work, I came home to find my living room light flickering. As I entered, I froze in place. The couch was turned around, facing the mirror I had moved into the living room earlier that week. The reflection in the mirror was wrong. The reflection of the couch was empty, but in the mirror's reflection of the room, I could see someone sitting on the couch, dark, shadowy, and distorted. Their eyes glowed in the reflection, staring directly at me. I blinked, and the figure was gone, but the feeling of being watched never left. Part 3 The following night, I couldn't sleep. The tapping was louder than ever, and I felt the weight of something dark pressing down on me. I had to get answers. I needed to know what was happening in that house, and I couldn't ignore it anymore. I went back to the attic, determined to face whatever was causing the noises. The air was even colder than before, and the attic door creaked open on its own. As I stepped inside, the scratching resumed. Tap, 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 but now it was joined by a soft whispering sound. It was a voice. I couldn't make out the words, but it was unmistakable. A voice calling my name. I turned toward the mirror, and I saw something that made my blood run cold. The reflection in the mirror wasn't just of the attic, it was of a room I had never seen before. It looked like an old, abandoned house, much like the one I was standing in, but there was something off about it. The furniture was broken, the walls were cracked, and the floor was covered in dust and cobwebs. But in the center of the room, there was a figure standing in front of the mirror. It was me. I stumbled back, my heart racing in terror. How could it be me? 
How was I standing in two places at once? And then, in the reflection, I saw the figure reach out and touch the mirror. A sickening crack echoed through the attic. The glass shattered. And in that moment, I saw it. A face in the mirror, not mine, not anyone I knew. It was pale, gaunt, and twisted, with hollow eyes staring back at me. It grinned, revealing rows of jagged teeth, and then it spoke. You shouldn't have come here, it hissed. Now you belong to me. Part 4 I stumbled back, barely able to breathe. The figure in the mirror began to move, its distorted body twisting and bending as it crawled out of the shattered glass. I screamed and ran for the door, but as I reached the stairs, the air turned icy cold, and the lights went out. The whispers filled the air, growing louder and more frantic. I couldn't see, couldn't breathe, but I knew something was right behind me. It was getting closer, and I could feel its presence, the cold breath on my neck. I burst out of the house, my heart pounding in my chest. But as I looked back at the front door, I saw the figure standing there, its pale face pressed against the window. Its eyes followed me as I ran, and it grinned that same twisted grin. I never went back to that house. But even now, sometimes when I look in the mirror, I catch a glimpse of something or someone standing just behind me. And I can still hear the whisper, faint but growing louder, you belong to me.